Hi, welcome back to ES301 Engineering Analysis. This is Chapter 3, Approximation and Round Off. So here are the learning goals. At the end, you'll know the difference between precision and accuracy. You'll be able to calculate both true and approximate error values. You'll know what causes numerical round off. And you'll also understand binary storage of both integer values as well as decimal values. So I'm going to first just kind of discuss a little bit about significant figures. Um, and you can think of a, a, a numeric representation of a number as, as sort of like a gauge. It's trying to give you an, a, an idea of what the value is. And there's going to be a particular number of significant figures that you have or a resolution you can read. So if I look at this gauge here, um, I've got tick marks every about every two. And so it seems like I don't have very good significant figures. I'm only going to know this plus or minus a value of two. Um, if I have a digital display like this, it's a little bit easier to know exactly what my significant figures are. Um, I'm able to go down to, to three values of the decimal place, which is going to be my, plus or minus 0 0.001. And so I know exactly what my resolution is, and I also know the number of significant figures um, I can put in there. What we're going to see with um, numerical representations of numbers, particularly when they're stored in, in binary in, binary in, in uh, decimal computers, is that again we have this resolution that we can get um, but it isn't a linear resolution so like my scale here it was always plus or minus two um, here it is always plus or minus 0 0.001 what we're going to realize is it's going to kind of depend on the value but again it's going to be sort of these um, incremental amounts because when I store binary numbers I store it to factors of two so I have twos, fours, and eights and I've got halves, quarters, and one-eighths um, etc. and we'll look at this a little bit more detail but this is kind of the, the increments that I can go ahead and work in. And so my precision, for example, in this number here would be plus or minus 1, 8. Because um, that's the best resolution that I have um, being stored in this binary number. We're going to look at this in a little bit more detail in just a few moments. First, we're going to define the difference between accuracy and precision. Um, and so this is an image from the textbook where, first of all, we're looking at someone shooting at a target that is uh, neither very accurate or precise. And so... Um, we realize that on average they're not near the bullseye, so they're not very accurate, and they're also sort of all over the place. It's neither accurate nor precise. Um, at least here it's clustered around, and so if I was to take the average value, I'd be really close to the bullseye. And so we could actually say this is fairly accurate, it's just not very precise. We have to do a lot of iterations in order to, to get the true value. And here's an example of being very precise um, every time you're getting the same um, area, but you're, you're not accurate. And you need to be careful with numeric routines because you might have something that's very precise, but it's zeroing in on the wrong value. Um, and so just because it's precise doesn't mean it's actually what you want. And then here's ultimately where we want something that's very precise and very accurate. I don't need to do a lot of iterations to average and find out what the bullseye value is because it's both accurate and precise. I want to define a couple types of error. So first let's talk about what is the true error. Um, and the true error, well, it's just going to be whatever the actual value is um, minus whatever my approximation is. We're looking at numeric routines in this course, we're talking about like maybe what its numerical approximation is. So imagine I was looking at this tower um, and I wanted to determine how tall it was. Well, we know that it was a 100 meter tower. Uh, to find out the error is, maybe we went ahead and, and, and numerically approximated and it was 100.1 meters. And so my true error was 0 0.1 meters. And so my numerical approximation of the height of the tower was uh, 0.1 meters, that's what the, what the error was. Now, the thing is, is that if I just went and told you the error in something was 0.1 meters, if you didn't know the tower was 100 meters, you'd have no idea if that was um, a big number or a small number. So often we'll present this as a, a percent, and so the symbol's a little different. Here we use this epsilon sub t, sub t for true. So what we're going to do is we're just going to normalize it by the true value, and then usually we express that. Um, in percent, so multiply it by 100 to get percent. So in this problem that I just had, I would have had 0 0.1 meters, and now I would normalize it by the true value, which is 100 meters. Um, and so then I'd find out that this is going to equal 0 0.001, or in terms of percent, 0 0.1 percent. So now I'm able to numerically approximate the height of the tower to 0.1 percent. And now I've got a better sort of idea whether that's very accurate or not. Now, one of the things with a lot of uh, numeric routines is we don't actually know the true value. How do you know the tower was 100 meters tall? Um, often we don't know. 
And so what we we'll do then is we'll talk about what's an approximate error. And so here I'm going to use the sub A value for the approximate error. And what you would do is you take your, your measuring device and how you're actually trying to do it. This would be it's this tape measure here. Um, and then we would go ahead and determine well, what's the precision or the, the um, error that's associated with the measuring device. And then I'm going to go ahead and divide it by the approximation, which is what I measure. Because we don't know what the true height is. We can just measure it and get an approximation and know what our error is. So then my measuring tape would go to, to one millimeter. So that would be 0 0.001 meters. So that would be my approximate error. And we measured it at 100.1 meters because that was what our numerical approximation was. And so now if I go ahead and look at that, that's going to be 0.001%. And so um, my error so it looks pretty small. Um, again, we never know what the true value is. The best we can do is take what our approximation is and know how much unknown there is, so this, this one millimeter here, in order to give you what's called the approximate error. Um, this comes up a lot in, in iterative solutions. Oops, let me erase some of that. Let me move right on from this. Okay. Um, so if you're doing an iterative approximation, um, for example, here I have this series where I'm approximating the value of E of X. This is the thing, we don't know what it is. It's like power height, but we don't know what that is. And we've got some sort of approximation where well, we're just going to keep adding successive terms in order to determine what the, uh, the value is. And at each step that I have, there's going to be a particular amount of error that I had associated with it. And so in this case, what I'm going to be doing um, to determine my approximate error, it's going to be the current value I have minus the previous one, and I'm going to normalize it by the current value. So for example, um, my first estimate is 1. I have no idea what the error is at that point, so it's 1. On um, the next step, it would be 1 plus x. And so let's look at what that error is. Well, that error is going to be 1 plus x, which is the current value. And then I'm going to subtract the previous one, which is 1, and then normalize that by the current value, which is 1 plus x. And that would give me an idea of what the error is at this step. And, you know, maybe that's 2%. And I realize I want to know it better than 2%. I'm going to go ahead and go to the next step. Maybe it goes down to 0.1% and then 0.002%. And as each step, hopefully the error is going down, the approximate error. And again, I, I can't get a true error because how in the world am I ever going to know what e to the x is? That's what I'm trying to do with this numeric routine. So I can never get a true error. I can just get what's called an approximate error. Um, let's kind of just uh, look at this uh, kind of a little bit more concretely here. Um, and then kind of introduce something that happens as sort of a caveat with uh, um, doing this on a computer where we're storing numbers in binary. Okay, so here's my, my series where I'm approximating the value of e to the x and say I'm going to do this at a value of, of x equal to 0 0.2. So, well, my very first step is just equal to 1. So here I'm going to create a table. This is my decimal value. It's 1. And now I have to store that in a binary number. So um, I'm going to store this as a binary floating point number. And so let's just imagine, and don't worry about exactly the form of this, Let's say that this is the binary representation of the value of 1.0, okay, which is my initial approximation. Um, then I'm going to go ahead and, and add the next thing over here. So my next approximation is 1.2. And now I have to store that as a, as a binary number, the binary floating point number. Maybe it looks like this value here. Right? Um, and then I'll go ahead and, and add the next number here, which would come to 1.22. I have to store that as a binary number. And maybe it looks like that one there. Here's my next step. Each time, you know, the binary representation changes a little bit. But as I'm showing it here, I'm only showing it with eight bits, uh, which is a pretty small number. And so maybe I go to the next step. So I'm going to include this last term that I show up here. But since uh, I, I, I ran out of, of precision in my binary representation, right, I end up having the exact same one. It kind of gets truncated. So it would look like, you know, well, the approximate error there is zero. If I wanted to calculate it, because my previous and current value is the exact same, it would say that I've got zero approximate error, even though I haven't really zeroed in on the answer. So you need to be careful when you uh, compute your approximate error that you aren't getting down into your machine precision. Now, here I'm showing this with just eight bits, and as we'll see in a minute, that's actually um, a pretty small number of bits to store a number in. Normally, it's stored in much more, but you still can always get down to an approximate error of zero, even though you haven't necessarily gotten the exact true value here. Okay. So let's uh, talk about binary storage. And so one of the things about binary storage with, with, uh, with modern computers um, is that it's all done in these digital storage gates that are either on or off. And I think of it as uh, you know, on, off, one or two, 
uh, black or white, yin or yang, however you want to look at it. It's just something that's two different values. Uh, it's normally easiest to think of those two values as ones and zeros, but remember it's just a gate that is either open or closed, the left or the right. Um, let's go ahead and first look at, at integer storage. So I'm going to look at integer storage, which are values like 1, 2, 3, minus 1, minus 2. If I store those as a series of, of ones and zeros, I can look at an 8-bit byte here, um, and that's the storage. And if this over here on the left, or sorry, on the right, is my least significant bit, that number right there would represent 2 to the 0, that would be 2 to the 1, 2 to the 2, up to 2 to the 7, and then I would just add all those particular values together to get the um, digital value. So this is an, um, an unsigned integer, positive integer. Here's my 2 to the 0 is going to be 1, uh, 2 to the 2 is going to be my 4, and then I've got my value over here, which is 2 to the, um, 2 to the 4, which gives me 16, and I add all those up, I get 21. So this is what the number 21 would look like as a binary number. Now, um, now most scientific or engineering programming languages, they use much more than one byte. They usually use something like 4 to 8 um, bytes for an integer storage. So if you want to know how many different discrete values I can have, I take my 4 bytes, 8 bits to a byte, so I can store it in 32 bits. And you know the number of discrete values I could have, 2 to the 32, is this large number over here, which is greater than 4 billion. 4 billion discrete values, and I could I could uh, distribute those maybe all positive, or maybe half of them positive, half of them negative, depending on whether it was signed or unsigned. But clearly a lot of, of values that we have. So that's how we store integer values, and they're, they're pretty straightforward. Things get a little bit more complicated when I start looking at what are called floating point numbers or decimal values, right? And so this would be a number, you know, like 1.6843, like that's a decimal value. How am I going to store that as a string of ones and zeros? So I want to discuss this. This is a little bit more complicated. The way that it's done is you take a series of, of bits, or, or, or maybe I've got it here written out into four different bytes, and then you distribute those in something that's called the exponent and the mantissa. So I'm showing you over here where I've got a series of bits that I'm going to have to store the exponent in, and then the rest of these over in the mantissa. And then what I do is I, I store a particular number in the exponent, so maybe I store the number point, or sorry, plus 3 in there as an integer value, and then I store a decimal number in the mantissa, maybe I store the number 1.01996. And we'll look at how we do that in just a moment, but for now let's just set records we do it. So if those two numbers are stored in what's called the uh, exponent and mantissa, the number that's being represented is this here. So it's 2 to the e times the mantissa. So 2 to this value, so 2 to the 3, and then I multiply it by the mantissa, which was this 1.01996. So here's the number that would be stored, that I'm actually originally stored, by storing these two different values in this combined four bytes of value. So that's my decimal representation of a number. Let's dive into this a little bit deeper, okay? So first we need to, to talk something about the I, IEEE 754, and this is a standard for storing um, floating point numbers. So we just discussed this idea of exponent mantissa, and we're going to do a little bit more of the detail here of this, this standard. Um, and one of the things is, is the exponent's always adjusted so the mantissa will have a 2 to the 0 term, and you don't need to store it. So remember, again, my number stored is 2 to the e times the mantissa. Um, and the mantissa is going to be a summation of values of 2 to the power. So I can always adjust this exponent to, to be such that the mantissa is going to be 1 point something, or 2 to the 0 plus a couple more terms. So that lets me do what's called a hidden bit that I don't actually have to represent. That's going to end up being 2 to the 0 is going to be that value here. I'm only showing the mantissa number. There's an exponent over here, and the number I store there is an integer, like you saw in the previous slide. That's pretty, pretty straightforward. I have my exponent over there. All right. Um, now, as I mentioned, um, the exponent is usually in this finger over here, I took at least something before. It's an, an 8-bit integer like I have, and so I store a number in there. Um, and so let's, let's go ahead and look if I had four bytes, one byte for the uh, exponent, and then I've got these last three bytes to be the mantissa. And I want to store this simple number, just the number 0 0.1. And let's look at what that would look like. Well, it gets kind of complicated. So, so first of all, here's my exponent. This is this first byte. And... I need to have the sign of the exponent, which would be a plus or a minus. That's when we're done with this first bit. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and store in this exponent over here. And since I don't do the sign, that means it's going to be negative. And then 
this right over here is the binary representation of, of minus 4. So now I've got 2 to the minus 4. So that right there, that's my 2 to the e value. And then this is my mantissa, and I've got all these either 1s or zeros. And I have the, the hidden bit. I'm always going to have a 2 to the 0 term, so I don't store it. And the next one down is 2 to the minus 1, so I did do that. I don't have 2 to the minus 2 or 2 to the minus 3, but I do have 2 to the minus 4. So I'm adding all those up. So this whole thing down right over here, this is all the mantis. And I do until I run out of bets. So I went ahead and had um, almost 24 bets to store in here. And some of these are turned on and some aren't. And when they're turned on, I add the 2 to the minus whatever power I need. And if I was to multiply this number by all that, so you got in your calculator, you get a number pretty close to 0.1, which is what I was trying to store. But it turns out it's not exactly 0.1. Um, in fact, it's this number here, 0.1, and then a bunch of zeros, and then 1490116. And so it's not particularly accurate. There is a plus or minus value that I have. This is the resolution in my binary number. And look, I have about, oh, say, six, six to eight different significant figures. Um, and then this number down here is the resolution of it, which is more or less this 2 to the minus 23 value that's down here. Plus or minus, this is the smallest um, inter, inter, um, interval that I can go ahead and store in my mantis of value. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and, and do a simple one. Uh, we're going to create our own digital representation of the value 2.78. I put all these zeros from this is an exact value. And to keep this simple, instead of doing that big one, we're going to have this simple 8 bits. I'm going to put the exponent in 2 bits, and then the last 6 bits will go ahead and be my mantissa value. And so I'm going to go ahead and figure out, do I put zeros and ones in here to get a number that looks like 0 0.28? Okay. So remember, this is my exponent. So I've got 2 to the e. So I'm going to store a number between 0, 1, 2, or 3 in this thing right over here. That's the most I can store with a, a 2-bit exponent. So I'm going to store a number in there. And then the rest in the mantissa. So um, let's assume we have a hidden bit. So we're always going to have a 2 to the 0 to 1. So this one right over here is 2 to the minus 1. And that right there is 0 0.5, 2 to the minus 1. 2 to the minus 2 is 0 0.25. And if I go ahead and write down this for all six of the bits that I have, like 0 0.125, 0 0.0625, 0 0.0325, and then 2 to the minus 6 is 0 0.015625. Okay. So, so these are all the different bits. And depending on if I turn on that bit, I add this into the mantissa. And I want to determine which one of those I want to go ahead and add. So... First of all, I um, want to store the number 2.78, and so the exponent I'll do, I'm going to go ahead and store a 1 in there, so the, the integer number is 0, 1, because 2 to the 1 is equal to 2, um, so that's right over there, it's the first part that I want to multiply by the mantissa, so 2 times m is going to end up being equal to 2.78, so that's what I want, and I've determined, I have to determine m, well, that's, if I take 2.78 divided by 2, to get my value that I want in the mantissa, to 1.39. So I want to store 1.39 in the mantissa. So that's what I'm trying to get by adding together a bunch of these. Now, first of all, I have my hidden bit, which is 2 to the 0. So I'm going to add a 1 to it. All right now, I need to get another 0.39 in there. So I'm just going to figure out what else. I don't add 0.5. That's going to put me over much. So maybe I'll go ahead and do a 2 to the minus 2. So I'll add a 0 0.25 to it. So I'm going to go ahead and put a 0 in there, but I'm going to put a 1 in there. And then let's go ahead and look at what other ones we want to go ahead and store. And so um, maybe I want to go ahead and store a 2 to the minus 3, which is a 0 0.125. So I'm going to get a little bit closer. And maybe a 2 to the minus 5, which would be a 0 0.03125. So oops, let me go back here. And so if I total all of those up there, I'm going to get 1.390625. And I had um, 0, 2, 3, not 4, 5, and not 6. So there's what my number would look like. 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0. It would actually store 1.390625 in the mantissa. And now I multiply that by 2 to figure out how close to the number of 2.78 I get. So, um, you know, it's kind of, kind of complicated to do, but it's also sort of a straightforward. So you might want to come back and, and look at this example in more detail. Make sure you understand how to store it. But the most important takeaway message is when you store uh, decimal numbers, you're always going to have some sort of, of uncertainty in it, um, some sort of error. And so 
you want, thought the number would be exactly 2.78, it's not going to be in all likelihood. Um, so this introduces this idea of, of significant figures or, or, and then also round off error. All right? So we just saw we can only store a certain precision of the values. And so imagine I had a number numerically, oh, 10,000, and I could only go ahead and store to six significant figures, one, two, three, four, five, six. And then I also store it as a floating point number, oh, 0 0.01. And then I'm going to add those together. Well, if I numerically add those together, but I only have six digits of precision, it's going to be 10,000.0. And then it's going to essentially just truncate, lock that off. And so adding 0 0.01 to 10,000 gives me 10,000. Well, that's going to be bad because if I do some sort of loop and I add 0 0.01 to it, say 10 million times, I sure would expect that this value would go up and it doesn't. So you need to be careful numerically that essentially you have enough room and then these numbers aren't that different in magnitude that essentially you're just losing what you're trying to do right over here. So there's a lot of caveats when you're doing numerical um, values that aren't obvious in just the uh, analytical analysis. Of it. All right, so let's go to review what we looked at in this video. Um, so we defined what true error is, and we saw that true error requires a knowledge of the actual value, and often we don't know what the actual value is. And so instead what we're going to do um, is we use approximate error. So the magnitude of true error is only meaningful relative to the value of the true value, or the, the uh, relative to what the true value is. The approximate error is going to be a measure of that value relative to our best approximation. And that's usually what we have. We don't know what the true value is, but we've got our best approximation, which is the current value. Um, and we often do that when we're doing iterative um, algorithms. We keep adding more and more terms, and we'll always know what our approximate error is. We saw that decimal values can only be approximately represented in binary storage, decimal meaning like floating point numbers. This leads to this idea of round off error. And round off error is pretty important when we're doing numeric routines. Um, and also we saw the chopping example where if we can't store the number with like 10,000.01, um, we'll actually never be able to, to do a uh, numeric routine with that. Um, the last thing, round off error has the greatest consequences when performing arithmetic of numbers that are in vastly different magnitude, which we saw in the last.